and I just wanted them to finally leave me alone. All this over Josh? I just didn't want them to terrorize me anymore. Rachel Marie Wade was born on February 27, 1990, and lived in Pinellas Park, Florida. Most would describe her as your typical teenage girl, slightly boy crazy and somewhat rebellious. By the time she turned 15, her behavior had gotten more out of control than ever before, with her choosing to drop out of school while staying out at all hours of the night with friends. She would spend most of her time chasing around different boys, most of whom were bad boys with bad intentions. By the time Rachel turned 18, she decided to move out on her own and work as a waitress. By the summer of 2008, she met a man named Joshua and quickly became infatuated with him. He had that bad boy image that she liked, so it wouldn't be too surprising that Rachel would end up in a relationship with him. Joshua was a ladies' man with a bit of a reputation for being the kind of guy who would see more than one woman at a time. In fact, he'd even had a child with another woman prior to his relationship with Rachel. But none of this mattered to Rachel. She was head over heels in love with Joshua and wouldn't have it any other way. However, Joshua was the player type, and he couldn't see himself sticking around for the long haul with Rachel, so he called it quits. The short-lived relationship had such an impact on Rachel that she refused to believe it was over. Joshua was two steps ahead of Rachel, seemingly over the relationship before he'd even officially called it quits. He was so over it that he started hooking up with another girl, Sarah Lundeman. Sarah was a high school senior who most would describe as a sweet girl who followed the rules and got good grades in school. Known for being innocent for her age, Sarah felt a sense of excitement and pure happiness to know that Joshua, someone she thought was handsome and funny, was interested in her as much as she was interested in him. Unfortunately, because of her innocence, she didn't quite notice the red flag surrounding Joshua, including the fact that he'd garnered a reputation for dating more than one woman at once. Sarah fell so deeply in love with Joshua that she'd even requested to transfer to a different high school, enabling her to be even closer to Joshua's home. At some point, Sarah discovered that Rachel was still in contact with Joshua, and she didn't like it. She reached out to Rachel to inform her that she was dating Josh and wanted her to leave the two of them alone. Of course, this took Rachel by surprise, as she felt the relationship between her and Joshua wasn't really over. Both girls believed they'd known Joshua first, but the truth is that he met them both around the same time in the summer of 2008, and he seemed to enjoy the attention he was getting from both. After all, he now had two girls fighting over his love and affection rather than holding him accountable for being a player. Sarah was willing to fight and argue for Joshua, because this was her first love, and someone she felt she could see herself spending the rest of her life with. Sadly, this was all a game to Joshua, who was using both girls and referring to them as friends with benefits while receiving attention from other women outside of this love triangle. Even so, the girls didn't realize this at the time. Sarah wasn't okay with the idea of Rachel thinking she was going to ease her way back into Joshua's life, so she made it a point to show up at her job to tell her off. According to Rachel, Sarah had made her spill a few drinks and even followed her home while trying to get her into a car accident. Rachel had enough of it and decided she was going to take action, harassing Sarah and leaving her threatening voicemails, including one in which she says, I'm going to murder you. Next message. Please tell me, Sarah, why you would be a dumb enough to put a brand new picture of you and Josh at the beach. Seriously, I told you to watch your f***ing back and not to f chill with him. Now your ass is mine, and I'm guaranteeing you I'm no f***ing letting you know that now. Because you know what? Josh might have played me, but bitch, I'm going to play your ass out too. Watch. You're a f***ing fat bitch, and I'm going to swear all my life. Watch out your f***ing window when I get off work tonight, you dumb bitch. End of message. Next message. It's so funny how you talk and you want to sit there and say that my man... Was that Sarah's house? Then tell me what he was wearing tonight, Sarah. You're a dumb bitch for real. If you're f***ing lying, I'm going to find you and I'm going to beat your ass. If you're not lying, I'm going to find you and beat your ass. The threatening messages certainly scared Sarah, and although she complained about the situation to Joshua, he seemed to find some joy in the two girls fighting over him. 
He continued to talk to both behind one another's backs, and he never asked either one to stop the harassment. It was all a source of entertainment for him. Rachel and Sarah would spend the next several months threatening one another and arguing back and forth over Joshua. On April 14th, 2009, Sarah came to school crying. She was stressed over her relationship with Joshua, and the fighting and bickering between herself and Rachel took a toll on her mental health. Her friends at school told her she needed to end the relationship and do what was best for her. They hated to see her upset over a guy who, to them, simply wasn't worth her time. Sarah didn't want to break up with Joshua. She felt like she couldn't do it because she loved him and wanted to be with him. So, she decided to take matters into her own hands. After several hours of crying over the situation, she headed to Rachel's apartment and started honking her horn, informing Rachel of her presence. She wanted Rachel to know that she was there and ready to fight, if necessary, for the one she loved the most, Joshua Camacho. Before heading out the door of her apartment, Rachel grabbed a knife from the kitchen and began making her way down to the parking lot. She wanted to have a means of protection because she didn't know what Sarah planned on trying to do to her. By the time she got downstairs, Sarah was screaming at her and letting her know that she needed to stay away from Joshua for good. She drove off immediately after to meet up with Joshua. While watching a movie with Josh, he was texting on the phone. Can you imagine who he was texting? It just so happened to be Rachel. In the meantime, feeling frustrated by the situation, Rachel decided to go to a friend's house where she would proceed to text Joshua complaints about Sarah. She told him he needed to leave her alone. Once the movie was over, Sarah noticed how late it had gotten and decided she needed to head home. She didn't want her parents to worry about her. Before leaving, Joshua's sister and a friend asked if they could come along for the ride because they wanted to go to a restaurant. Of course, being the kind and caring person she was known for, Sarah agreed to take them to the restaurant without hesitation. As Sarah started driving down the road, a car on the opposite side of the street was pulling in. Sarah looked to see who it was and noticed Rachel was behind the wheel. In disbelief that Rachel would have the nerve to show up to her boyfriend's house, Sarah turned her van around and stopped it right near Rachel's car. Sarah stepped out of the van and began approaching Rachel's vehicle. Rachel grabbed the knife that she'd taken from her kitchen earlier and held it in her hand, hoping that it would scare Sarah off and prevent her from attempting to attack. However, Sarah seemed unfazed by the knife at this point. The two began fighting, with some hair pulling and fists throwing before Sarah suddenly stepped back, moved away, and headed back to her van. It was then that Sarah realized she'd been stabbed in the chest, not once, not twice, but three times. Rachel noticed her knife was red but couldn't recall stabbing Sarah in the chest because everything happened so quickly. The fight felt like it only lasted for a few seconds before it was over and done with. Joshua's sister and her friend began screaming because of the blood pouring from her chest. They didn't know what to do. Sarah had enough strength to make one call, which she made to Joshua. When he picked up the phone, she said, It hurts before passing out on the road. One of the girls with Sarah called 911 and reported the stabbing. While all this was happening, Rachel took off, tossing the knife she used to stab Sarah in the chest on top of the roof of a home in the area. She couldn't believe what had just happened. After the ambulance arrived at the scene, they loaded Sarah onto the vehicle and took her to the hospital, where she succumbed to her injuries. The knife pierced Sarah's heart, causing her death. Rachel had never been in trouble with the law before and didn't know what to expect after stabbing Sarah. She was in a total state of shock over the situation and couldn't believe what unfolded. A detective would eventually find Rachel sitting on the porch of a home, where he then asked her to come back to the station for questioning to find out what transpired between her and Sarah. At this point, Rachel didn't know Sarah died. When detectives informed her that Sarah had passed, Rachel broke down and began crying. Despite feeling like she was only trying to defend herself against Sarah, Rachel was charged with second-degree murder. Her family was just as shocked as she was and couldn't believe that Rachel had ended another person's life. When you had it with you, you had it in the car with you, right, and you drove over to Javier's house, 
Why did you have it with you? Yes, it says that they were going to find my car and follow me. She got me to me. So you, are you telling me that you had it for some form of protection? Yeah, because I, I know they're going to jump me. Do you have a gun or anything else? No. Okay, so that was your form of protection. Okay, so when you got in the car tonight to go over to their house, you had it in your hand, all right, and you brought it with you. When you were arguing with Josh, you had it, is that right? That was in my seat. Okay, and did they tell you to put it away? Okay. I had it out when Sarah got there, hoping that she would just like walk away from me or see it and think that I was actually going to do something, and then they both came after me. What happened when you encountered her? She just started screaming at me, and she laughed at me and said I wasn't going to do anything, and she realized that I had a knife, and she kind of backed up, and she started swinging on me anyways, and I just... When you say she started swinging on you, what was she, she doing? She started punching me and like, my face. Flailing at you? Yeah. Punching? And I it coming around. And where were you holding the knife at the time? I just had it out to the side. Tell me how it happened. So she was hitting me, and when I went to hit her back, I had put one of my hands up, and I had, like, I tried to hit her back and keep my hands in front of me. This is the knife. Show and me how you were holding it. Back. Okay. But and now, if, if I'm Sarah and I'm in front of you, what were you doing with the knife? How I did you had it out to the side, and she started swinging on me, and then when I went to put my hands out, she was swinging on me, and I tried to defend myself from her, and then Janet came at me. Sarah didn't have any weapon with her at all, right? She wasn't carrying a bat or a gun or a knife that you saw, right? Okay. And you went out and you met her in the street, came up to her side of the car where she was getting out of. Is that right? She stepped in, like, in the front of my car, yeah. And then when she started screaming at me, and then Janet started coming around the side, so I walked over a little bit further. But and initially it was just you and Sarah because you said Sarah was, and is that how your lip got hit? I think Janet did that. I don't know. Do you know what my job is? Hmm? What? To take care of things like this, to make sure things like this don't happen. Well, I understand that. That's, I mean, that's overall police's job. But my specific job, do you know what it is? To figure out the details of it. Well, that's part of it. You're correct. Okay. They called me because of the serious nature of her injuries. Okay. She was stabbed. All right. She was stabbed twice. Because before I came here to talk to you, I went down and saw her at the hospital. Okay, she stabbed twice in the chest, and she has no other injuries on her whatsoever. Why does somebody like you go one versus three? You go out into the street and meet them. Why didn't you just run in the house and call the police? I don't know, but they came I, after me all the time. Okay. I don't want it. I did not. So you wanted it to end and be over with. Yeah, but right? I have no intentions whatsoever on stabbing her. I have a great life. I mean, I have a job, I have my own house, I have my own car, I have everything, and I just wanted it to end. Here's the next thing that, that you need to that you need to understand, Rachel, okay? When I was down at the hospital, okay, I saw where she was stabbed at, okay? It looks like she has two stab wounds, all right? The next piece of information that you need to know is that she is dead. Oh, my God. She died as a result of these stab wounds that she had at Northside Hospital. <laughs> I didn't know what any of this happened. I just wanted them to finally leave me alone. All this over Josh? I just didn't want them to terrorize me anymore. They follow me everywhere. They come to my job. They come to my house. Well, she's not, not going to follow you anymore because she's dead now. By July of 2010, Rachel would go to trial. The defense argued that Sarah was the one looking for a fight and that although Rachel did cause bodily harm to her by using a knife in the fight, she was simply trying to protect herself. Joshua would eventually take the stand in the courtroom. He'd been the reason the two girls were fighting in the first place. However, what he had to say would shock everyone. According to Joshua Camacho, neither Rachel nor Sarah were his official girlfriends. He referred to both as friends with benefits, nothing more. Joshua's statement was a slap in the face to everyone. Both girls considered him to be the love of their lives, and for him to think of them as nothing more than friends with sexual benefits was certainly soul-crushing. In the courtroom, the prosecution played the voicemails Rachel left Sarah. These were voicemails where she threatened Sarah and told her she would end her life. Of course, this made it look like Rachel had planned the murder, so she decided to take the witness stand and explain the situation. 
She talked about the threatening calls and messages she received from Sarah, but she deleted them so she couldn't use those calls and messages as evidence. Within a few hours of deliberations, the jury found Rachel Wade guilty of second-degree murder, and she would eventually be sentenced to 27 years in prison. As of October 2023, Rachel continues serving time at the Lowell Correction Institution 